in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up a Windows 10 personal computer as a complete RHEL development workstation. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I assume that your computer is running a fairly recent version of the 64-bit version of Windows 10 and that it has at least 4GB of RAM. If you're unsure of what you have, you can check that in the Windows System properties. You will need four things for a RHEL development system to work. The first thing is a database server software which will store whatever blockchain data your application uses. Chromia servers communicate with and use PostgreSQL. The second thing is a Java runtime environment which the Chromia server and integrated development environment uses to run. And the third thing is the, is the RHEL development environment and Chromia server. Uh, these two are distributed bundled in a package by Chromaway. And the fourth thing is a piece of client software so that you can try out the writing software that communicates with and uses blockchain data. We need to set up the database backend of the system. The backend, as I already said, is a server software called PostgreSQL. It will store all the pieces of data that are written in the blockchain and are used by your application. I have prepared um, a sheet of URLs where you can download uh, this software. And if you use the link displayed here, uh, you should be able to download it without doing any registration. So I would just copy paste that into a web browser and we get to the website. And here's a list of versions since uh, Chromia servers have been tested with, it, with the version 10 of PostgreSQL through. Uh, we will download that and uh, we are on a 64-bit version of Windows, so it's this link. You can choose to run or save it. Uh, it's just a normal program, so yeah, you can choose to just run it if you get that option. Yeah, this step can take quite a while when you run it because the web browsers do a lot of virus scanning these days. Yeah, and here we get the prompt for administrative rights and just to say yes. And now we are inside the installer of PostgreSQL. Yeah, just click next. And you can choose the default install location. That's okay. You don't uh, need uh, any of the administrative tools, so you can uncheck pgadmin4 and the stack builder. Command line tools is good. Uh, we will use them to configure the server and give users the proper rights. Yeah, and this is where uh, the blockchain data will be stored on your computer. So you can use, just use the default location for that as well. And uh, then you're supposed to show us a password uh, for uh, the administrative user of the database server and to show something fairly secure uh, to avoid uh, the database server from getting hacked. But in this case, I will just use Chromia1234. Chromia1234. Next. And uh, which port number the server should listen on? Normally, this standard port will not be busy. Uh, if it is, you probably have another PostgreSQL server installation on your computer that you should get rid of first before installing this. But here, uh, I know I have no such installation, so I just press next. And uh, just use uh, uh, as locale uh, the default locale, and uh, we'll next again. And now it's installing. And if you have gotten to this step, you know that you have administrative rights over your computer. If you are sitting in uh, a company office or something like that with the centrally administrated computers, this might not work. Uh, so uh, you, you will have the need to have your own computer. 
Yeah, and I can add in that if anything of this fails and you have a complex antivirus solution installed on your computer, you might want to try disabling that while installing. Yeah, so the PostgreSQL server installed and uh, the next step is to configure that server. Now we are going to configure the PostgreSQL server. That is, we are going to create a database on the PostgreSQL server uh, and a user which has the rights to access that database. That user will consequently be used by the Chromia server. So uh, we just uh, press the start button and search for PSQL. That will hopefully give you a result called SQL shell. Go into that, let's click it, and um, we get a prompt which asks us which database server we want to connect to. Uh, that is our local computer, localhost, uh, and if you press enter, it will just uh, take the pre filled value. So do that. And database Postgres is the administrative database. I'll we'll just press uh, enter again there for the default. Port 5432, you choose in the installation. So that's the default again. Press enter. Username Postgres is the administrative user created during the installation. Uh, so just press enter again. And here's the password that you choose during the installation. And, uh, I chose Chromia1234, so I enter that and press enter. So we are in with administrative rights and then now we can issue the commands that are needed to create a database and a user with the proper rights. I have prepared a sheet sheet with those commands, which I open now. First we have to create a database. To create a database called PostChain, I just copy that command and paste it there. Yeah, it worked straight away. Uh, you might have to press enter uh, after you type it manually. I pasted in now enter now by mistake, but uh, I will copy the second command that uh, creates a user with the password postchain and the username postchain. So I paste that and press enter. And um, finally, I give that user the rights to do everything possible uh, with the database we have created with this third command. So I just paste that in, press enter and uh, that concludes the configuration of the database server. We have created a database and a user with the rights to edit it. So we can just close that window and we're done with that. Now with the database server set up, we can continue with setting up the real development environment. To run the REL development environment, you will need a Java environment, a GDK development kit, or, an, or a JRE runtime environment. Here we will download the development kit and properly install it. So if I start a web browser and uh, I have my sheet, sheet here with URLs, I copy this one jdk.java.net and we will hopefully get into a page to download it ready for you, jdk13 is here so I will enter that and download the one for Windows x64 I'll save it I'll open the folder it is in Mm, and uh, then uh, I will unpack the files uh, to uh, a place where I know where they are because 
we will need to point to the application later. I'll put it on the desktop in this case. And uh, yeah, just extract the files there, wait for it to complete. And yeah, that's done. The files are extracted to a folder on the desktop, JDK 13.0.1. So I'll minimize that for now, and now we'll go to the Chromia website to download uh, the RHEL development environment package. So it's, it's chromia.com simply. And then we'll go to developer here, RHEL, and go to Eclipse ID in the sidebar. And here's a link. Real Eclipse ID can be downloaded here. Let's click that. And click the Windows link. Save it. I will open the folder it is in. And we will unpack it. I will unpack that also to the desktop. And it has done unpacking. If we go into that folder. Eclipse rel and start it now or try to start it, it probably won't work because I have not pointed to Java yet. Yeah, exactly. A Java runtime environment must be available, it says. Uh, and uh, it says that javaw.axe is not in your current path. So we'll have to add uh, we'll have to add that path. Uh, to uh, the Windows to, to the Windows Path database. So if we click the Start button and uh, type in here environment variables, Edit environment variable for your account is here. And uh, yeah, user variables for this account. If we click uh, Path there. Edit it. And uh, we'll create a new one. Uh, we'll look for the desktop where we put the Java development kit. And it's the bin folder in there. We are supposed to point to. So we just copy that path. And uh, then we create a new one here. New environment variable. Paste it there. OK and OK. I'll see if the real development environment starts now. So again, that we unpacked it to the desktop. So we'll try, try to start clips here again. Yeah. So the first time we start it, it can take a while, up to a couple of minutes, I would say. Ah, yeah. Uh, select directory as a workspace. We can put that on the desktop as well. Just create a folder called like rel workspace. Just use this as the default and launch the environment. Hmm. Yeah. Now we are in the real development environment. So we are finished setting that up. And uh, in uh, the next chapter, I will show you how to paste in some real code in this environment and start a Chromium node. With the RHEL development environment configured and up and running, we are going to use this environment to create a project and paste some RHEL code into there, which will allow us to run a Chromium node with that code. So if you just use this link here in the left sidebar, RHEL project, and uh, we choose a project name. Uh, for that name, we can choose anything. Uh, let's say uh, rel test. 
next. And as a template, we chose the Hello World template. Next. And finally, click Finish. So it has created a project based on a template. So if we expand the project folder here, we have a rel subfolder and a source subfolder. And here's the hello world.rel, which we open with a double click. Now, this example is not very interesting, I think. It just outputs uh, hello world into the console. Uh, since uh, we have set up a database server to uh, let us store data and retrieve data from the blockchain, let's utilize that. Uh, for a more interesting example. Uh, so uh, for RHEL workshops I participated in keeping here in Stockholm. Uh, I made a simple banking application in RHEL, uh, which allows for opening accounts and transferring money between those accounts. So uh, we will use that. It's uh, rather short and simple. If I look at my sheet sheet down here again, uh, there is this URL bitbucket.org, chroma wallet slash drop on RHEL examples. I'll just copy that and paste it into a web browser. Yeah, and I got there. And uh, here is the simple bank folder going to that. And uh, the simple bank.rel file. Open it. And uh, you will see the code appearing here. And it's uh, not very long, it's just an ordinary page long. And to have an easier time copying and pasting it into the development environment, you might want to click those three dots up here, open raw. And now you can just select everything and copy it. Then we go into the IDE again. And then we paste that over the existing code that's already there in the hello world.rel file. Paste. So our code is there. And uh, we can just choose to save this file. And now we right click hello world.rel in this left sidebar and choose to run as rel sample post chain app. Now this won't fully work already. It says that a config file for this node, blockchain node, is not found. So it asks us whether we want to create such a file. And we click yes. And we'll see that there's a new folder up here called config. And uh, with a file in it, node-config.properties. And uh, we here, here we see the configuration uh, where where uh, uh, the Chromia server is supposed to connect to the database server. So uh, yeah, it, it's connecting to the database server running on the local computer and the database uh, post chain. Username and password post chain, we have already created uh, these credentials. And uh, it's already set up the way it's supposed to be. It's exactly this. So now we can just Right click this hello world.rel file again and run as rel sample post chain app. So now the server is starting, the Chromia node is starting, and it says post chain app started. And uh, at the same time, it also says blockchain RID, and um, that is an identifying code uh, for this blockchain which has been started. So please copy paste that. You will need it uh, when we use the client later to communicate with this banking application. So paint it and choose copy. And we can just paste it into notepad for instance. And uh, that concludes how we start a Chromia node with specific rel code. In the next chapter, we will do an example of how to use a client with this to edit data and retrieve data from the blockchain.
with the, the Chromia node running, I will show you how to communicate with the node using JavaScript style code. So first off, if you don't already have it on your computer, we will need to download node.js and install it. So that's available on the address node.js.org. Go there and uh, yeah, download for Windows. Uh, recommended for most users the LTS. Just download that and uh, save it. Okay, the security scans can take a really long time these days. Yeah, run that file so we get to the installer. This setup wizard will install node.js on my computer, yeah, okay. Accept the agreement and the default location is probably good. Just next it. And this, uh, this is not relevant for us. I'll just, we'll just leave it unchecked. And install it. And it's successfully installed. And now you should be able to, uh, if you search using the start button for node.js, you get a node.js command prompt. So open that. Yes. And uh, now we can just uh, type in, uh, go to your desktop folder, change directory desktop. And uh, we can create a folder there called, uh, for instance, uh, bank client. And we go into that folder to change directory to bank client. And uh, here we need to install uh, the Postchain client library, uh, which is used for it's a JavaScript library used for communication with Chromium nodes. Uh, you need to install that with uh, a node so called npm. So we install that tool by issuing the command npm install postchain client at version I know 0.9.1 works. So we specify that explicitly. Press enter and uh, it will start installing the client into a folder in the bank client folder yeah and uh, don't worry if you get some errors it's normal it will work anyway so now we have a folder on the desktop uh, containing the postchain client library but uh, we will uh, still uh, need the client code for the banking application. So if we go into this Stockholm REL examples web address again. We will a folder here, yeah, simple bank, we were there before. And uh, there's a file called bankclientasync.js. Click that. And uh, you can click those three buttons and open it as a row to get it easier to copy paste into something. And uh, just select all, copy. Can just open a notepad, paste it there, and uh, now uh, here we go. Uh, the, this client needs to know uh, what uh, identity, blockchain identity, uh, we are supposed to connect to. So, if you look at uh, this identity that we copied earlier when the node was started, we will need to replace that in the client code. So take that one which you copied earlier and uh, here is const blockchain RID 
paint what is already there in between the hyphens and paste it. And uh, yeah, moreover, this client code says that uh, we are supposed to connect to a Chrome node on our local computer where it's running. It should already be running here. Uh, you were not supposed to close uh, the Eclipse ID. If you did that, you have to, have to follow that guide again and restart it. But uh, yeah, it's running here. Uh, so now we just save this file. Uh, on uh, the desktop under this bank client folder which we created using the command prompt and uh, let's say we save it as uh, bank client async.js save it there so now we go into the command prompt again and uh, to run a JavaScript program using node, you issue the command node bank client async.js. And uh, when I press enter now, this code, um, if you inspect it, you will see that it opens two bank accounts and transfers money in between them. And then it queries those bank accounts for their balances. So as a result now, we should get uh, uh, two bank accounts uh, which uh, initially had 1000 units each in them but 333 units are supposed to be transferred between account 1 to 2 so we should get the balance 1333 and 667 so let's we'll see if this works yeah here we go balancing account 1667 and the balancing account too is 1333. So it worked splendid. Uh, so now we have used client code uh, to uh, edit data in the blockchain and query data from the blockchain. And that finishes this tutorial.